If you visit the great cathedrals of Europe, you will find in the heart of their altars the relics of the saints, the body and bones of the great men and women of the past. And many will stand in great awe and wonder to themselves, what is this obsession with the human remains that Christianity has had for nearly two millennia? Is it merely pagan superstition that re-entered the Christian world? Why? If you look at the Eastern philosophies, the body is seen as something to be escaped from. Plato saw the material world as inferior to the spiritual. But the ancient Jews, who first heard the word of God, with whom we are grafted into one new covenant, they understood from Genesis, as we understand from Genesis chapters 1 and 2, that God is the God of the body and of the soul of the heavens and of the earth, and that therefore the body is inherently good, and that the body is intended for immortality as well as the soul. And so what then does this mean for the importance of the human frame? If Adam fell from grace, so that sin and death, disease and infirmity came to both the soul and the body, it was necessary for God to not only rescue humanity's soul, but also to rescue humanity's body also. It is not enough for us to, in a Neoplatonic sense, ascend back up to the heavens as a dove flying upward only. But God took on flesh to redeem not only spirit, but also to redeem flesh. God entered into earth not only to draw us up into heaven, but in some sense to divinize, to sanctify, to hollow the material world. That is why the most shocking words, perhaps of all time, can be found in the Gospel according to John. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us. And this is why the good news of the crucifixion is not good at all unless there is an empty tomb and unless Christ bodily rises from the dead with an immortal physical body, the same body he had before, but now the sting of death is removed. No longer does death have any more dominion, to quote the great Welsh poet Dylan Thomas. And death shall have no more dominion. And from Adam to this day, we do still see in our lives sickness, sorrow, disease, and even the martyrdom of those holy men and women who we speak of. I'm here before the relics of Maria Garatti, who died tragically and young. I'm here before the relics of Francis of Assisi, who bore the gift, but also the physical pains of the stigmata. If we were in St. Peter's in Rome, we would be before the relics of Peter, who was crucified upside down, horrendously. Paul, who was beheaded. And yet, they willingly went to their martyrdom, as we willingly put up with our own bodily aches and pains, and sometimes chronic ones. And we redemptively unite them with the redemptive offering of the once-for-all sufficient sacrifice of Christ. Because we know and profess that which was handed on to us, that which was of the first importance, that Christ died for our sins, according to the Scripture, that he was buried, that he rose the third day, according to the Scripture, that he appeared first unto Cephas, then unto twelve, then 
and to over 500 of the brothers and sisters at one time, and to James. And the last of all, St. Paul says in 1 Corinthians 15, to me as one untimely born. The paraphrase I just gave, paraphrase though it is, I would look up the exact wording if you can from 1 Corinthians 15, that famous hymn, that creed, goes back to literally, back to the very dawn of the Christian movement, maybe within only three years of the events of the resurrection of Christ. If truly we know that that was written while the eyewitnesses, Peter, Paul, James, when Mary, the mother of Jesus, the mother of God, was still walking among us. And if we have true reliability, as we do in the whole totality of the prophetic scripture, then surely we can take up our cross and we can follow the Lord. For he has gone ahead of us, and having been raised, we are raised up with him. Therefore, we can say with Paul, death, where is your victory? Death, where is your sting? We boast in the cross of Jesus Christ because of the empty tomb. We do not shrink from suffering, though it can be very heavy and great, because we know that our God seated at the right hand of his Father, with whom he is one in substance and nature, intercedes for us and knows our infirmities, having carried them all upon the tree. In Christ, hope has entered into time, and we are raised in him. May God bless you all.